you on me, not, hey. <laughs> Here we are. Happy Valentine's, y'all. Are you doing good? <laughs> we are so silly tonight. It could be a very dangerous gathering here. But we're so glad you joined us, whether you're joining us live or if you're joining us later and catching us on the, the rebound here, it's all good. But a day that we celebrate love. One of my favorite, favorite holidays because, you know, I think every day should be the day that we celebrate love. But this special day, have you told somebody uh, today that you love them? Have I told you lately? No. <laughs> you know, sometimes we need to, um, we need to remember to say it. No matter how many times Donnie tells me he loves me, almost every time he tells me my toes turn up. It's like it's the first time all over again. Because I just, I just love Don't to hear it. Oh my goodness, we're not very spiritual tonight. I don't think. Baby, <laughs> would you stop? Let me save it from there. <laughs> <laughs> but don't, don't you love to hear when somebody that you cares about, care about, especially when they say, "I love you." I wish, I wish our English language was better because we have the same word. You know, I love haagen coffee ice cream and I love my husband. It just seems like there should be some more words. <laughs> but we're going to do our best tonight to not only tell Jesus how much we love him, but to really share the love of God one with the other. You know, that's how the world will know we are his disciples, by the love we have the scripture doesn't say by the love we have for God. It says by the love we have one for another. Did you call somebody today and tell them I love you? Call your mama. Call your friend. Call your aunt. Call your somebody. And tell them because sometimes we just need to hear it. I was thinking, and I don't want to get messed up, but it will be a year ago next Tuesday that my dad transitioned and crossed the river. And what I loved about my dad is from my earliest memory there was always some kind of a sweet Valentine gift. That's not what we're talking. So many times Dad would sneak over to our house and we'd get up in the morning and there'd be roses for both Des and me. Just so thoughtful. And so I, I miss him tonight. I always watch. Huh? Oh, you always watch tonight. Oh, my goodness. But you know what? I love it when the moon is full. And I go out and I just talk to the great cloud of witnesses. I feel them very close. And I feel their love tonight. I hope you feel loved. I know this holiday can be tough. I have a couple of friends who are widows. And it's a tough holiday. Uh, tonight I wore my red shirt that May May got me. I think she's tired of seeing me in so much black. It's all fun. <laughs> but I know this is a tough night for her. Our sweet, sweet May May. Because uh, I know she misses my dad. But I know this. To marvel at the wonder that we were loved at all. We have a, a friend of ours that preached his sister's funeral. She died way too early. And he said, I can focus on what seems to be loss. Or I can marvel at the wonder I ever knew her at all. And I think that's the choice we make. To marvel at the wonder of what we have, not what we seem to have lost. So tonight... We are going to focus on good news. We're going to focus on the love of God, which is not just this, but it's this. And I believe tonight, if you're having a really kind of a tough evening, if we'll get our eyes on Jesus and get our eyes on the blessing of God, I believe we're all going to leave here feeling good. We're going to do a little singing for you tonight. Are you ready to sing this? I could sing of your Sing of your love forever. I could 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 sing of your love forever. 
sing something, you know you've kind of overdone it, but, but we had come into this revelation of love, and it wasn't just about his love for us or our love for him, it was about us understanding this human family that God had blessed us with to love and to embrace and to, to celebrate, and um, so we started singing this, and uh, it, it would become a 10, 15 minute moment, right. I love you, I love you, I love you. I love you, I love you, I love you. I love you, I love you, I love you. With all of my heart. I love you, I love you, I love you. I love you, I love you, I love you. I love you, I love you. Oh, it's that simple singing when there's a love 
brought you here Let it be a sweet, sweet sound in your ear. Sing that with me.
Paul's writing to us, he tells us that there are times when we get so full. He, he kind of accans it to something Peter wrote when he said, there's joy when you get into this atmosphere of love and it's unspeakable joy. It's full of all of this glory and wonder yes. and but Paul said there are some times when you can't even put it into words. Uh, and I'm not sure that this is exactly what he was talking about, but sometimes when you just want to forget anything and just find something to lock into to sing to him. Oh. certain songs we've written 
are you talking about the love you have for Donnie or the love you have for Jesus? And I say, yes. <laughs> Isn't it funny how we try to separate it when all love, every good gift, comes from above? The love that we have, the love I have for my children, the love I have for our family, for our close friends, that is God. It's not just um, it's not just a thing of oh if I can I can really really love God no I've learned I can really really love the God in Christopher and the God in Terry and that is a holy holy thing. Many years ago we were actually living out in California and there is an amazing writer that has written a lot of great songs a lot of love songs that are on the radio. And we had been blessed to write with some great, great people. And one day, Patrick Henderson came to our house in California and um, wanted to write with me. And, and Patrick is like Donnie. He can just grab a handful of notes. And it's like you just turn the key in my soul of, of lyrics. And we wrote this song a few years ago. We actually sang it at Dan and Ruth's wedding that happened right here. But it's it's a love song, but it's sometimes when I'm singing it, I'm thinking about some of you that have been there for me. There's no greater love than the love that the Lord has shown to us. I know that. But it's all from Him. And tonight we celebrate that love. When my day the darkest your word shines bright with promise you're my light when I feel the weakest you send the joy I'm needing you're my strength
I, I love some of the songs that we've written that some people can't interpret. Well, who are you singing to? You know, John said, if you say you love God and you don't love people, well, you don't even get it. So a part of our growth has been learning that the more you learn to love God, the more you learn to receive God's love, mm -hmm. the more you receive the love from people and the more you love people. And it doesn't have to just be those that do something for you. It's they just showed up and you get to love them. Um, sometimes I love pulling songs from what we call secular. Um, you know, all of it's music to God. Uh, I don't think he makes any distinction. I don't think he even distinguishes between Southern gospel and contemporary gospel and country gospel. I, I think anything that can be used to direct people to him and give people an understanding of who he is and how great his love is for them, I, I think he probably just loves that. And, you know, we talk a lot about how he loves us, and we talk about how we love him. Sometimes we find it difficult to put those in intimate terms that we would sing to our wife or our husband or our children. But these are songs that we we just love singing them because we get to sing, sing them to him. Uh, and I've sang this one a few times to her. Yes, you have. Have I told you lately that I love you? Have I told you there's no one above you? You fill my heart with gladness. Take away all my sin. my troubles, that's what you do. And I can say the same thing to you. You fill my heart with gladness. You take away all my sadness. You ease my troubles, that's what you do. I, I like messing people up when I sing something like You're just too good to be true. Can't take my eyes off of you. You're just like heaven to touch. I want to hold you so much. At long last, love has arrived. And I thank God I'm alive. You're just too good to be true. Can't take my eyes off of you. You are so beautiful.
I thought the sun arose in your eyes And the moon and stars were the gifts you gave to the dark Maybe um, 
uh, I don't, all kinds of things can happen. But when we start looking at the Lord, the day of the Lord, it's always a good day. Whenever our expectations, I'm not saying we lower them to people, but we give people a break. You know, uh, some of the girls that I know that I've kind of interviewed saying, what kind of guy are you looking for? And I want to, and they start telling me all the list. I said, girl, you're looking for Jesus because there ain't no man on this earth that's going to do all that stuff you're looking for. There is no perfect man or no perfect woman. But when we, you know, and some, some people think, I want, oh, I want my mate to be my all in all. You know, they're my everything. I just want to do things just with them. You know, sometimes you've got to let the pressure off. I remember the first year that Diane and I were married, and we were living in this little apartment. We didn't have hardly any furniture, but we had a piano. Diane's always going to have a piano. I think we've got six in the house. No. <laughs> Well, when you count all the keyboards and stuff, yes. But we always have had a keyboard. And I remember that first Valentine, he bought me a little cute little ornate carved kind of oriental table and chairs. That's all we had in the living room, that and the piano. And a fireplace. And a fireplace. So I've got all these candles, and I'm lit the candles, and I'm just wanting him to play me music, and it was awesome. It was romantic. It was fantastic. About three or four days later, I lit those candles again, and he's looking at me, and, and I had a book of poetry. I said, oh, baby, would you just read this poetry to me? He looked at me <laughs> like my dipstick don't touch oil. He's looking at me, and he's like, honey, I said, please, baby, just, just read. I think you may have read one poem. Want to play? It was just the piano and serenade me. He loved me, but it was just. And I remember getting so frustrated. I thought I married this amazing singer, this amazing musician, and he should be. He should want to play and sing for me every night. <laughs> he should, he knows I love words. He knows I love poetry. And I got so upset. And about 3 o'clock in the morning, I'm still upset. I get in the bathtub because that's the destiny. That's our sanctuary. We go get in the bathtub. Rambo women love a bathtub. Yes. We line them with candles. And I'm sitting there and I'm crying. God, he don't, he don't want to read poetry. He doesn't want to. And all of a sudden, it was like the Lord was right there. And he's going, baby, it ain't in him. <laughs> and I thought, what? He said, it ain't in him. And you can get all upset because this one little thing that you had envisioned in your little scheme and plan, that this is what marriage is. And then it was like the Lord began to tell me, Let, let's talk about what he does. Does he bring you coffee in bed every morning of your married life? If you're home and if you're on the bus, he would bring me coffee on the bus. I said, yes. He said, that's love. Does he press your clothes when you're running late, on, especially when we were touring? That's love. I can't sew nothing. My mother was an amazing seamstress. I'm terrible. When I'd lose a button, God was saying, does he sew that button on for you? I'm like, yes, sir. And then I really started crying. And that was the first time the Lord began to deal with me about love language. And he said, if you put that kind of pressure for him to do, go to every movie, everything with you, and you just push everybody else away. Only I, only I, the Lord, can be that to you. Have you ever seen women that have their girlfriends, you know, that they do stuff with? You know, it's not even, I don't know why I'm talking about this, but I'm going to. You know, sometimes with a friend, we put such pressure on them. you got to be there for me. you got to do this. you got to do that. I've learned I've got a handful of my girls that are I'm close to. And I look to Cynthia for a certain thing. I look to Susan for a certain thing. I look to Jeannie for a certain thing. But none of them can be everything to me. That's Jesus' job. My friend Darcy, she's my shopping bag. But it's, it's good. And some of us need to give people a break. I had no intention on saying this tonight, but some of us need to give our husbands a break. Some of us, we put ex expectation on our kids. 
I birthed you, I raised you, I da 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 da. There is a time to say, I love you. You're awesome. I don't need to be your best friend, I need to be your mama. Friendship is a powerful thing. But some of us are even going through situations. I talked to someone a couple of days ago that's so angry with God. God, why didn't you do this? God, why didn't you do that? Instead of looking at what he had done, they were so angry at what they hadn't done. He hadn't done. Sometimes we need to give God a break. He sees, he sees the end of the journey. He sees the entire maze of life. He loves us so much. Do you ever pray for something and it's not and cry and you didn't get it? And then about five years later, you're looking back and going, oh, thank you, God, you didn't answer that prayer. You ever prayed for something, you didn't get it, and then you realize, if I, oh, you ever pray for a guy? You didn't get him, and then later on you see him and he's snaggle tooth and gained 200 pounds. You go, oh, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Unanswered prayers are sometimes the best prayers. Unanswered prayers are sometimes the best prayers. And I know I'm being silly. But some of us on these days can get so in a condition. The truth is God loves us. And there are people in your life and my life that want to love us. Sometimes we have built a wall city around ourselves and don't allow people to love us. I was reading 1 Corinthians 13, and we're going to close here in just a minute. And we're going to pray. 1 Corinthians 13, you know it, but I'm going to read it. If I speak in the tongues of men and angels but have not love, I am only a resounding gong or clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains but not love, I'm nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and surrender my body to be burned in the flames, but have not love, I gain nothing. I love this. Love is patient. Sometimes when I read this part of, of 1 Corinthians 13, I put my name in there because I know God is love. I made in his image. So the real Reba is love. When it says love is patient, I remind myself that the real Reba is patient. Love is kind. Reba is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It's not rude. It's not rude. It's not rude. It's not self-seeking. It's not easily angered. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects. Always trust. Always hopes. Always perseveres. Love never fails. Everything else will fail, but love will not fail. Where there are prophecies, they'll cease. Where there are tongues, they'll be still. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part, we prophesy in part. But when perfection comes, the imperfect disappears. When I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. I reasoned like a child. But when I became fully grown, I put away childish things. Have you ever had a temper tantrum? And you look back and think, man, I was acting like I was four years old. Love never fails. And our prayer for you during this Valentine's Day and this season is that you become love and flesh. And people, when they see you, it's like a big red heart walk in the room. And there's a sweetness and a kindness about us because we are children of love. There are a few requests I want to read just real quick. And those of you that are watching, you'll see those as you scroll. And I just ask you uh, to be praying with me. This is one of those. I, we really need some prayer support. Raymond, who is a friend of Dana Ruth, he's 16 years old. 16 years old. A talented, talented young man. He was diagnosed with stage four bone cancer. And he started his treatment yesterday. Can we believe for Raymond? Can we believe that he's going to beat this thing? That the greater one is in him, the one that is greater than cancer. 
and sister Tina has a swollen kidney and possible surgery. Well, Tina, we speak the life of God to you. Sue fell on concrete in pain in her knee and her head, and she had $100 stolen. Oh, my goodness. You say, well, that's just, that's not a big thing, $100, honey. To, right now, $100 is a lot of money. So, money, we speak to you to come back into Sue, is this Sue me? Into Sue's hands right now, in Jesus' name, and we speak healing to her body in the name of Jesus. Margaret's friend had brain surgery today. We speak healing, no infection, that everything will be textbook perfect. Uh, sister's, uh, Sue's sister had a rough time with chemo. And we just speak that the life of God is greater than the effects of chemo. Amen. Chase needs healing. Also, a six-year-old boy who is dying, please pray. Wow. Pray for that family. I pray uh, for the will of God, for the kingdom of God to come in that situation. Debbie's nephew, Philip, had brain surgery this week. Wow, there's a lot of attacks going on in, with the brain and the mind. In Jesus' name, we speak the life of God. Wow. Grace, her brother and sister-in-law, um, had asked for prayer because uh, Grace's niece, their daughter, has major medical issues. Little Olivia, we just pray for her. We've been lifting her up. And are, we, are you joining me in prayer for these people? Will you go back and relook and, and pray with us? Uh, Margaret needs more work. Her work is down to two days a week. Please pray. Will we speak job, opening up, money, opportunities come to you, Margaret? Um, oh, Steve says, pray for friends who lost an adult daughter unexpectedly today. Wow. That is so tough. I, my sister Jeannie, uh, one of her dear friends, died suddenly this week. He was in his early 60s. And some things we just don't understand. But I do understand the plan of God is good. I understand the comfort of Holy Spirit is more than enough. Uh, Cheryl said, pray that Steve has a heart test tomorrow. We're praying for great results for Steve. In Jesus' name. And there are people that are just missing their families. Let me tell you, can I had a uh, I had a moment today. I was missing my daddy. And you know what? That's okay. But then I walk out and I look up and I go, what are you doing today, Dad? What adventures are you on? And I focused on a higher thing. And all of a sudden that loneliness lifted me. I could feel the presence of my dad. And and I know he's alright. Let's pray. Father, I just speak your comfort to those who are hurting right now. I speak your peace to those who are struggling in Jesus' name. I speak the perfect love of God that cast out all fear. Fear be gone in the name of Jesus. We trust you, Father. We believe in your plan. We believe in your goodness. We focus on what we have, what you have already done, the goodness of our God. We see that. And even when those who have crossed over, we're all going to cross over. And we thank you that they did not cross alone. And we are not left without comfort. We are not left alone. You, Father, are with us. And right now, Lord, I thank you that your love invades every room, every bedroom, every living room, every hotel room, everywhere someone is watching this, even on their job, later when they're watching it. I thank you that the love of God invades and cocoons them and hugs them and wraps them and heals that broken place. This is your day. This is love of God day. Father, I thank you that you send people into our lives who will fill any void. Friends, those that will be true blue. And Lord, that starts in us. Let us be the friend that others want. Let us get out of being selfish and be selfless. Let us be Jesus in flesh. Love walking around. And we thank you for that privilege, Lord Jesus. In your powerful name we pray. I want to tell you tonight that God loves you. Jesus loves you. We love you. And if you haven't heard that today, I want you to know today that I love you. And if you have to do this, I've had to do this sometimes myself. 
give your own self a hug and realize that you are loved. You are special. You're important. You are called. You are chosen. You're the best God's got. And He is watching after you. As we say around here, we love you. There ain't nothing you can do about it. We'll see you next Tuesday. Be sure and share this broadcast, this gathering with someone else that may need it. Pray for us. We love you, and there ain't nothing you can do about it. God bless.